Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Today, I'm interviewing a guy and we're going to kick some ass. He's going to go over some stuff with you that he's done that's literally changed his life. He's been in jail twice, gone through some crazy shit. He's an overcomer, which th that's me. I'm an overcomer. And I think 99% of you that are watching this has been through some stuff. The question is, where are you going to go? I want you to listen to his story. It's going to change your life and it's going to inspire you to want to reach for more. Check this out. My body went numb like a minute ago. I can't feel a thing from my head to toe. I lost my mind, man. I'm out of control. I can't stop. So, Andy, the first question I want for you, this is a good one, I think, anyways, is when you think of all the things you went through, who did you need to become to be the person sitting here today? Well, it was somebody totally different than anybody else in my family um, had, had ever been, right? So what happens is, obviously, a lot of people, um, who they are, their identity, right, is their mom, their dad, their grandma, their grandpa, their, your weight, what you look like, how much money we had, the shit we ate, um, you know, like what kind of cars did we drive growing up, dude, like we never had money, like all these things like built an identity in my head. So literally, I'm going to tell you this, um, these questions you're asking until I was 18 years old, dude, we didn't even, I didn't even journey into like trying to think bigger or trying, yeah, yeah, like. Like, look, get a job, stay out of jail. Um, my mom left when I was two. Uh, five brothers and sisters. Jerry Springer shit show. Never had more than five bucks in my hand at one time. It ain't a victim story. Like, it's just, like, it, that's my come up, right? Yeah. So so you're surrounded by a bunch of people, and I'm not going to say losers. I'm going to say but by people that had low standards, right, compared to the, to the life that I would want my kids to have. Low standards. We were just... Uh, we were just going through the motions of just normal mediocrity. Nobody's reaching for more. But um, when I was 18 years old, um, I had straight D's I'm in Oklahoma. A tornado comes and wipes out my high school. So I was going to fail, and I was going to go back again because I was making straight D's, right? Which And a couple Fs, which means I wasn't going to pass, so I was going to have to redo the grade. But since a tornado took our school out, they said anybody with passing grades just Shut got to pass. up. You just so, got it. Yeah, so, so I just passed, and I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I don't have to redo my, my deal. Because I never went to school. I barely showed up. I have no idea how I made it even through school. I cheated all the time. And and I'm not a bad person. I'm not a bad kid. Nobody ever explained a standard. Nobody ever explained what winning looked like. I played some sports, man, but nobody was watching the games. Nobody was wanting me to be great. Nobody was wanting me to be great. And I'm going to tell you this. I... I have been talking to my kids since they were born about who they're going to be, how great they're going to become, the way they're going to be world changers, how they're going to impact people's lives. I have, I have embedded that into them, their brain, their heart, their mind, their soul. I say, hey, kids, they're 7, 10, and 12 since they were one. I say, do you want me to feed you ice cream, right, like a little baby, you know, and make you feel good like a little kid? Or do you want me to treat you like the bad ASS that I know you're going to be and the leader that I know you're going to be? Like, tell me how you want me to talk to you. And they're like, Dad, talk to me like a leader. Okay, cool. Then let's go that way. Even my daughter. You gave them the choice? Yeah. I'm saying, hey, do you want me to feed you ice cream and make you feel good and treat you like all the other little kids? Or do you want me to treat you like the savage that I know you're going to be? Look, I want you to be loving, but I want you to impact other people's lives and I want you to be an example. See, I didn't get that talk. Okay, so like we didn't have any standards. We didn't have anything to look up to. I mean, my dad had a Dodge Neon at one point that I thought was so cool. Couldn't believe it. You know, it's like it's like it was the new car. It wasn't a four hundred dollar car. It was like, you know, uh, it was just it was the bankruptcy car. Right. Like they put everybody in the. But my point is, is that I when he had to have the Dodge Neon, I was like, damn, this is crazy. My standard of life was just. You know, like this is this is it. This is how we're going to roll until we die. Nobody went to college in my family, which that doesn't matter. But nobody really did much of anything. But when I was 18 years old and I graduated, right, and the tornado t tornado took out our school, a guy told me, he goes, "Hey, dude, you want a job?" And I said, "Yeah." And he, for 200 bucks a week, uh, he paid me to clean up uh, construction work, right? Because the tornado smoked the whole yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, right? it's a lot of shit to May, pick up. May of 1999, five mile wide tornado went through Oklahoma and smoked everything. Hundreds of people died. It was crazy shit. It was like a war zone. So they paid me 200 bucks a, a week to work from six in the morning till 10 o'clock at night picking up stuff. Anyways, after four weeks, dude. I have fiberglass all in my body. I'm smoked everywhere. I am finally making some money. And I'm like, dude, this shit sucks. Like, this sucks. I mean, like, this, like, I graduated and this is my life now. Dude, I was sitting there at my buddy's house and his older brother, I was talking to some girl and um, I had a little bit of a mouthpiece, just a little bit. 
So a lot of people ask me, hey Jacqueline, how do you manage being in business, being a mom, being a wife, and also handling a team and everything in life? Well, now we have all the answers. I started a show that will be on my YouTube channel. Now, it's going to be on Jacqueline Elliott is the YouTube channel, and I'm gonna be releasing, beginning on January 15th, a podcast every week. So if you're curious about who is behind Andy Elliott and the Elliott Group, check it out. See you there. And he goes, uh, he goes, dude, listen to me. He goes, if you could sell cars, you could make $5,000 a month. I was like, dude, first of all, if I had $5,000, I'd be rich. I'd be the president of the United yeah, States. Yeah, game over. You're thinking, you're like, dude, if, I mean, I'd, I'd be rolling around in Ferraris and shit, right? Because you don't even know what anything costs because you've never had anything. But when anytime somebody says the word thousand, you're like, oh, dude, that's like the news people make thousands of dollars. Like those are the rich people, right? And I didn't believe it, but this is crazy, dude. I showed up, he gave me a job. Okay, had no experience, no nothing. He goes, dude, just be nice to people. Show up to work, be on time, you'll beat most people. And I'm like, dude, it can't be that easy. I show up, first day, I get what's called a lay down. So you've been in sales, that's where somebody just says yes. Yeah, you don't yeah. even have to order taken. Just like, yeah, sure, hey, uh, I'll take it. I get a guy that says yes. My manager pages me in the office. He says, you how much money you just made? I said, if I just made five bucks, I'm starving. I wanna go get something to eat. He goes, dude, you just made $1,700. At that very moment, life froze. Right, I, 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 I literally realized that this was my way out. Like sales was gonna be my way out. Like it didn't matter. So you talked about like, who do I need to become, right? To like, to be this best version. Until that day, I never even asked that question or I never even cared about that question. Honestly, I was a loser. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, I really was a loser. I didn't think about other people. I had bad manners. I didn't care about customer service. I wasn't thinking about anybody but myself. And overnight, like just all this changed. And I was like, dude, this is my way out. I said, okay, so I'm going to master the craft here. I'm going to create mastery like Kobe Bryant did basketball. I'm going to do this in the sales Did it game. happen in that moment? Yeah, I changed immediately, man. There, okay, there has to be an epiphany bridge in everybody's life yeah. where someone went from here to here and something either really bad happened and somebody died and they're like, look, I got my toe cut off when I was four years old. Okay, my dad smoked four packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah. I would whine, complain, cry in the car. I, I would be choking on a s smoke, and I would be like, Dad, please, man, roll the window down. And I was like, nah, nah. This is back in the 80s, dude, where they, they made you choke out. But when I was four years old, my 10-year-old sister ran me over on accident with a riding lawnmower. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it ripped my toe off. There was blood everywhere. When my dad went, took me to the emergency room. Um, the doctor goes, there's a good chance your son's going to die. He, it took an hour to get there. He goes, he's been bleeding out. He's lost a lot of blood. My dad, that very moment, quit smoking. You know, that had to happen for my dad to realize that, hey, my son may be gone. I'm done smoking. All right, I'm done. I've had enough. Okay, I know a guy just got cancer. Guess what? He quit smoking the day he got cancer. It sucks that he, that he couldn't give it up a little too early. I think there's a, a, a epiphany bridge in everybody's life where something happens and they the say, all right, staying the same. Yeah, like I'm yeah. sick. Yeah, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, dude. And by the way, maybe there's a life that you didn't know existed. Mm. And, um, you know, so anyways, that was mine, dude. I made that money. Uh, it was like my veins changed. I was like, oh my God, this is my way out. And here I go that year. I made 150 grand in sales. At the end of the year, I was 19 years old, go back to my dad, right? I was still living in his house. I just saved all my money. Didn't really talk to my dad because I was at work from 7 Did you in the morning. You didn't tell him? Well, I didn't have time to talk to him because I was working from 7 in the morning until 11 o'clock at night. I worked six, seven days a week. I never took off. I was addicted. I loved what I was doing. I was obsessed. I was a freak. My dad didn't know what was going on. Okay? I mean, he's always Did gone. you think to yourself if I told him he wouldn't believe no, me? No, I didn't care. No. I wanted to tell him. I was too busy working. Dude, it's like, it's like I was becoming yeah, this new Yeah, hooked person, up to the right? machine, yeah. Yeah, and then um, anyways, I, I asked my dad. I said, Dad, I need to do my taxes. And I gave my dad my, uh, my W-2. And he goes, what are you doing? He goes, dude, you start paying rent right now. Like, this is bullshit. Because I wasn't paying rent nothing. I was just living in my dad. I was living at the store, and I was coming home at night to sleep. Wake up, go to the gym, go back to the store. Anyways, um, I went and bought a house. I went and bought a new Corvette because I was a poor kid. So first thing you do, first car, you go buy a brand new Corvette. I'm like, dude, I got to roll, man. I'm ready to go. I, I want everything now I've never had. Now, I'm not telling anybody watching this that they should do that, but that was my deal. I went from broke to being like, nobody taught me how to sp spend money, save money. I'm like, I need to get a house. I need to get a Corvette. Now I'm in the game. By 20 years old, I was making 500 grand a year selling cars. And I want to tell you something. This is what I learned. The, the best advice that I could give anybody, I've lived on since I was 18 years old. If you want to smoke everyone, 
If you want to beat everybody out there, most people learn enough to make just enough to get to their standard, to have the life that they want, and then they slow down and stop learning. That, that's everyone. And by the way, I know a lot of people that are even big influencers like us that do big shit. Even they're not who they say they are. And they're going around telling people they were once someone and they're not that person anymore. And so I want to tell you that I made a vow like, dude, my secret, my secret is I'm not smarter than anybody, but I will out self develop everybody. And I, I studied everybody. I studied the way they talk. I studied the way they spoke. I, t I studied the way they walked. I studied the way they treated other people. I studied the way they cared. I, I studied whether they were speaking just with word tracks, maybe something that they memorized, or whether they were speaking with their heart and they believed what they were saying. I watched people's eyes. I could see into their soul and see who they were. And I studied, I was like, man, look, if I look into someone's eyes and I can see their soul and I can see they don't believe or they don't care about me as much, I've learned that they couldn't close the bigger deals. So I tricked myself completely become to become that person. person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, I'm going to tell you this. I never had a good leader. I wish I could tell you I learned Some from this Some person came into your life and yeah. Nope. Nope. My wife. My wife came into my life. She drew a hard line in the sand and she goes, I will not tolerate these things. And as long as you do this, we're good. And, and I needed that hard deal. And I was like, okay, damn, man. All right. And I never had a mom. So I was like, all right, mama, you know, yeah, let's go. But that was the person that changed my life. My wife's advice has been the greatest advice. But what I did is I had a bunch of shitty leaders. I had a bunch of people that told me to Showing do it all the wrong what way. not to do. Yeah. And listen, dude, because I did the wrong things, I made the bad mistakes. I know now had I reverse engineered this and done it this way, then that would have worked. So now I do everything that no one did for me and it's all working. And that's what I'm telling you is that in society, all these bad leaders still exist. Mm. All these people that are saying, hey, if you want this, John, you got to sacrifice this to get that. No, dude, you don't have to sacrifice your family. You don't have to sacrifice being close to God. You don't have to sacrifice your health. That's a lie, dude. That person doesn't believe they can have it all. So they have no many beliefs. Yeah, they're one dimensional. Dude, because they're one dimensional, they don't want you to believe you can have it all. Screw it. My wife, one time. I was playing that game of like making a lot of money. She's got a beautiful house. You know, she's got everything she wants, cars. Her purse is full of money. We're killing it. Dude, my wife goes, dude, we've learned to live without you. We, we, we don't even need this money. I married you to be with you. You're not even present. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I go through this victim story. My mom left when I was two. You don't know what I've been through. And she goes, shut up. I'm so sick. I was cool that you changed and you became this, but dude, okay, 1.0 turned into 2.0. Where's 3.0 Andy? 3.0 Andy says, all right, now I've learned how to make money. Now I need a master having a good life. She's like, dude, if you want to chase your whole life, that's fine. You're not going to be present with us and we're going to le learn to live without you. And you're going to be just like everybody else. It's the facts. Or you can slow your ass down right now. You can own your life, which nobody does because everyone else owns their life. But you can own it, and there's 60 minutes in an hour. You can go to work, and you can work your ass off. And don't call me. Show me when you get home how much you missed me, how much you love me. Walk into the front door with your eyes on fire. Walk in. Show us some damn love. Don't bring us leftovers. We're sick of seeing the leftover shit, Andy. She's like, I watch you sell, motivate, and inspire your team all day Be long. Be that guy for us. And you come home and give us fucking. She goes, I wish I could have some of that. Fuck yeah. Just wish I could have just a little bit of that. And dude, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing everything wrong in life, man. And so at that point, I started to change. Is that when it started becoming about other people? Well, yeah, I think that until you start making it about other people, I it think It sounds like you got really good at being Andy. Yeah. But we, when well, did you start? I was unfulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. Until, look, dude, I'm going to tell you the truth. Until I was 39 years old, yeah. right? Which is why- Not long ago. I'm, not long ago. I'm 40, 43 now, right? I'm about to be 44. The reason why I'm so crazy now and I run so hard is because all I'm trying to do, which is what I know you're trying to do, is that you're trying to make people not have to go through that shit. In our businesses that we're involved in every day, I see businesses struggle because people have personal problems, not, not business problems, and they, don't, they think they're business problems, they're personal problems. They're going through divorces, and, and, they're, and, they're, and they're not there for their kids, and they're getting fat, and they're out of shape, and they, don't look, they look in the mirror, and, and they don't like themselves. Their, their families are fighting. People are sleeping in the same bed, and they're miles apart. 
And, and it's all for one simple reason, man. It's because we're in the era of the worst leader in the history of time. And by the way, um, good preachers are ones that went and slept with a lot of girls that went out and a lot of people are like, what do you mean? No, that went out and got drunk, that went and did some stupid shit, that went and robbed a house and said, hey, that's stupid. And now I'm going to go talk to all you and I'm going to explain to you, you don't want to do this stuff. This is the bad stuff. And they changed Paul, right? Paul, yeah, Paul man. Was Saul. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the old Andy was like, how much money can I make? Yeah. And it was like, that was, that was my deal. Yeah. It was like selfish deal. But now it's like, dude, I want to make my, my wife proud. And you know, what's made my wife proud watching me change other people's lives. I've watched her eyes light up when I'm a good man. Yeah. And, and in the beginning it was for her cause I was trying to figure out how to change, but Cash in a check was always like, yeah. And then I would help someone. I'd be like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, like, fucking like yeah, like this, yeah. this helping somebody overrides cash in the check. So literally in 39 years old, um, I, I dove into fitness really hard. Um, I quit my job. Me and my wife started our business. Um, I took her with me. I said, babe, if, I, if we're going to do this, like, I know I can't do this without you. So I need you. Like, this is a time I need you. For the first time in my wife's life, I was, dude, listen, I'm, I'm a great husband. I'm a great husband. I'm better than most. Um, I was a level two to my 10, what I could be for her. And I was playing small. I think people need to understand that because you're doing better. Most don't mean shit. Okay. You need to play to your max potential. I could have been way better to her. And so I, I, for the first time I said, babe, I, I need you to, uh, I need, I need you to support me. I need you to go with me. I don't need you to be behind me. I need you to be next to me with me. Um, I'm lost, but like, as long as you support me, I don't care about money. I just need to hear, I need to hear you say, Andy, I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of this guy you're becoming. And a lot of people, they hear that and like, ah, oh, come on, listen, dude, I swear to God, my wife says, I'm proud of you. Dude, dude that is bam. the language for a man. Yeah. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like that gets me like, going. Watch out. Like I'll go to war. Oh yeah. So when I did that, my wife, she's like, okay, okay. All right. All right. Three point oh's here. So my wife took our million dollar house, which in Oklahoma was a lot of money here. You can't buy a cheeseburger with it, but in Oklahoma you can buy really nice shit. Right. Um, and she sells it. She gives up her house, her home, the place she's raised her kids in. She goes, we're going to go get a rent house because I know this business we're about to build. It's going to need some capital. Yeah, well, and it's going to be hard. And we're going to go through some hard times. So she goes, I'm going to give up my deal and we're going to go. So I, she explained to the kids, hey, man, mom and dad, we've always made you keep the house super clean. We're selling all our furniture. We're selling our house. We're going to get mattresses. We're going to sleep on the floor. It's going to be like a party every night. It's going to be like a tent. We're, we're, we're going to live low for a year, and mom and dad are going to build a business. We're going to change people's lives. We're going to go. We're going to sell all your toys. We're going to sell everything. But we're going to be together. We're going to be close, and dad's going to be present. Mom and dad are going to get close, and we're going to have a good time together. And, dude, as a family, we grow really close. Me and my wife started training courses. We started recording. We started making content. Um, I couldn't even get on a, a, a camera. I had my phone. I was like, hey, babe. it's Aunt. She's like, Andy, no, no, no. you got to have some energy, man. Let them feel your heart. And, dude, she was like, someone's on the other side of that camera, Andy. If you're going to change their life, you can't seem like you're staging it. You can't be scripted. you got to be real. It's like she was, like, brainwashing me to become a genuine person because I was so cold-hearted from years of sell of the thrill of the kill, right? So as I transitioned out of this, dude, I started to realize that, man, like, dude, I'm actually me. So I got in great shape. I looked in the mirror. I like me. I'm good to her. She's proud of me. The kids are looking up to me as their hero. I like me. I'm like, okay, cool. The only thing we're missing now is money. And then I learned you give away as much value for free, yeah. as much value for everybody told me, hey, charge for everything. Yeah. Tell you said that nope. you got something badass and then and then make them pay for it. No, dude. Give it all away for free. So we we shot YouTube videos. I saw it, man. You just yeah. flooded YouTube. YouTube non stop. Every, day. Yeah. every we, day. We did two 30 minute long form yeah. videos a day for a year. Teaching straight. the same stuff. Other people are charging thousands of dollars. We gave it away for free. For free. Here it yeah. is. Talk well, tracks, so, everything. Well, that's how we took Grant Cardone out of the automotive industry. Yeah. Um, is that we gave away the stuff he was charging for. We did it better for free, and it was just me and her. And I said, hey, listen to me. I'm not going to ask you for anything. All I want is you to subscribe, like, comment below. And, dude, even if you have a question, just text me. Text me. I love that yeah, part. Yeah, text me. I'll help you with anything you need. See, I saw Gary Vee doing text Dude, me. you were early at that. But yeah. see, but Gary Vee was using a text community. No, that's your number. So retarded. Yeah. I don't even understand that it was a text community. I was giving them my real cell phone. So I've got people texting me 20 times a day, 50 times a day. And I'm just like, yeah, what's going on? I hope you do better. I'm giving, I have no money. I have nothing to sell. It's pure value. Yeah. And, and 
And a year later, after shooting free YouTube videos, I, uh, I decided, babe, I need to make your course. Okay. And we made one and it was like $299 and I didn't even have it completed yet, but she goes, Hey, it's new year's Eve. Why don't you go out there and just tell everybody it's a pre launch. And if they get it tonight, it's going to be 600 bucks. We get it for 299. First time we've ever put out anything for sale. Overnight, we went out there and said, I put a link on YouTube. We woke up the next morning with 150 grand in the bank. Damn. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And we just gave away a lot of value. Um, anyways, um, three years later, we built a nine figure business. Um, everything started with giving everything away for free. And the cool thing about this is this, is that if you're a real good coach, you'll give away everything for free because tomorrow you're going to be better than you were today. Yep. And people will pay to get a piece of that of you tomorrow if they can see your change. Yeah. And they pay for the implementation, not the information. Yeah, right? and, and proximity. Yeah, yeah, proximity, support. Yeah, because, dude, yeah. I'll rip your ass apart. Like, yeah. if we're on a call, like, we're going to do a coaching call here in about an hour. Yeah. And, dude, like, when you show up on that call, like, pen, pee, pee, piece of paper, get ready to row, total recreation, guys. Your life's going to change. We're going to walk you through A to Z on your new life. It's like, dude, when you're around people that have that energy, that have that fire, that have that drive, yeah, it's like, dude, you're like, okay, wait a minute, man. This guy's running at a higher frequency than me. He's running at a hot 120 like I'm in. And, and, and that's what I did is that... I created this guy, but my wife, and when I was 39 years old, I was alive, but I was really dead. Mm. Now I'm living life. Um, I, I tell people all the time, write down a piece of paper what you want. Dude, if you don't have your health, you're going you're gonna to lose. Done. Okay, you're going to regret it. If you, don't have, if you don't take your family with you, when you lose them, you're, you're going to hate yourself, or when they learn to live without you, you're going to be miserable. If you don't build a team, you can't build anything big in life. Um, I have a massive team. I have about 100 guys out here, uh, men and women, every day. Um, they're fire-breathing dragons. They run hard. They, I don't have to tell them what time to get to work. They know to get in here. They go to bed tired. They wake up hungry. They've all moved across the country to be here. Every one of them, when they moved here, they didn't know what they were going to get paid. They didn't even care. They gave up great jobs, making a lot of money to come here to change people's lives. Our mission has been about total recreation. Our goal is to totally recreate everybody. I don't care who you are, your marriage, your kids, your wife. And by the way, I have a sales training company, but that's just the decoy. We're good Dang. at sales. Yeah, yeah, But that's like, that's like. Yeah, it's the chocolate, the broccoli is, yeah, yeah dude, it's come into my world. If you're good at sales, dude, it, it's always a bigger problem than that. Way bigger. Yeah, and I love geeking out on sales, but the biggest thing is, is that we've just, we've gone so wide now. Um, I just always wanted to be somebody that I was proud of. And I'm going to tell you, anybody watching this, my physical fitness was the number one thing that fueled me to become a new person. Every day that I would start to see a different person in the mirror, I would start to believe that I was a different person. Yeah. Um, that's why I shaved my head. That's I'd get a tan. I'd go do anything just to see a different freaking person. I'd, ch I'd burn my clothes. I put an Elliot shirt on. I'm trying to figure out how I can see a different version of me. And, um, yeah, man. And the physical part changed the mindset part and the mindset part just fed into our business. Well, dude, the, the thing that I keep coming back to personally, that sounds potentially that you're after is becoming the person you needed most in your darkest days. Mm, yeah. You always chase what you don't have as when you're a kid, uh, when you're an adult. Yep. Yeah. It's like, you know, these people that have it easy as a kid. Yeah. I feel bad for them. They get their ass kicked as an adult, but the people that struggle as a kid, it's like all they want. See, as a kid, I was never loved. And I'm not being like this. Like, oh, I was yeah, never yeah, loved. No, no, yeah. no. It's like, it's like no, no, no. I, I want love now. Yeah. And I want people to feel it. Like, that's why when we're around people, if you've talked to my, my guys here, I bet every one of them hugged you. Yeah. Well, they didn't hug me, but they shook my hand. Well, well they gave me the man lucky. hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. Because yeah. they'll always put your put your arms around you yeah. because they, they, they just love people, man. Like, the, the deal that we love, we're, we all go to church together every Sunday. Um, we run together as a pack. Our, all of our families are together. Um, you know, it's like, dude, I always say this, if you can't find it, you know, build it. Right. So like, what do you want? Okay. Can't find it, build it. I, I want to talk about time and faith. Uh, sure. first time when you look at like your process of buying back your time, right. Cause I know you're also a person of standards and saying, clean up your fucking shit, like mm -hmm. do all that. Yeah. But how do you think of your time in regards to the like early days when you're starting off, it's you and your wife, but then 
how, who are the first few hires to help you elevate, to get, get the space for you to do more? Like, how do you think of buying back your time as a leader? Well, if you're going to build anything great and you're going to have time, you're going to have to have a team. Okay. An individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. So if you want to build something that you can't tear down, build a team. And, and I didn't say build a, 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 a company of employees. Employees will work for a check. Okay. A team will run through a wall for you. Okay. I always say there's like three types of leadership, right? And there's like self-leadership, which means that whatever I'm going to ask anyone to do, I must do myself because I can't give anybody what I don't have or what I'm not. Right. So if I, and that's why I said like double standards. The reason why I said that we're in the era of the worst leader in the history of time, because everybody's a double standard and son of a bitch. They tell the team to expect this, but then they don't do it themselves. Or they tell you to do this, but they're really not that way at home. Right. So number one, I believe in like self-leadership. The number two is then you start to lead other people. And when you lead other people, there has to be a circle of trust, which means you're the person they want to become. Dude, it's 2023, 2024. We're in the era of the influencer. Everybody's on their phone. Even in the car, people are driving down the road and they're doing this. Like nobody's paying attention. People are out at dinner. And what are they doing? Doing this. Babe, how's the food? Good. Okay. They're here. Like nobody is really where they are. They're all here. Okay. So what does that mean? Everybody's looking for something. So if you're going to lead a team now, you have to be. That's a good point. Everybody's yeah. looking for something. Dude, they're there. So here's what I want to be. With my team, I tell them, look, dude, I'm going to be the most interesting person. I'm going to be the person who's in the best shape for you guys. I'm going to be the person with the most energy. And you call that shot. Yeah. Well, because if you don't, dude, they're going to own your people, man. I mean, dude, listen to me. Okay. I always say this. If you're a leader, if you're a boss, if you own a company, you can fire somebody. But they can also fire you and then go work for anyone they want. Okay, so how can you keep their attention? How can you keep them off your phone, off their phone? How can you, if I if I grabbed a, somebody's team and I said, hey, uh, let's say it's Johnny and he's got fifty people on his team, I'll say, hey, Johnny, bring your team in here. You just All pay right. him a little bit extra and see who walks forward. No, no, I just say, hey, everybody, here's a piece of paper. Do me a favor. I want you to write down the name of your mentor on a piece of paper, and if, and then when you're done, fold it in half. You guys can leave the room. We're cool. Thank you so much. Me and Johnny are just going to open these up. We want to see who you guys look up to. When, when they leave the room and Johnny, their leader, is sitting there, and I open up all these pieces of paper, I say, Johnny, where, where the fuck is your name, Johnny? Where's your name, Johnny? Where's your name? See, they're not looking up to you. You're not who they want to be. They don't want to be like you. They look at you as a boss. You're, they're your employee. No leaders. I don't want that. You know what I want? I want when my people show up to work, I want them to think, I can't believe that I get to work here. Like... Like, I can't believe I get to work here. Like, I want them to sit there and question. How does this place exist? Why did Andy do that? Like, yeah, yeah like, like, awesome. like, I don't work for money. Like, I know I need money to live, but like, I don't work for money. Like, I don't, I don't do any of this for money. I do this because there's something here that exists. And I'm tell you what it is. It's in the beginning a leader that follows what they say they're going to do. And then secondly, and then it's a person that leads everybody else to believe that they're capable of doing the same thing, that they're worth it. Hey, people will never out earn their own self-worth. The leader's job is to create the worth in the team. To, dude, I, I brainwash my team to believe that they're worth it and that their, their, their confidence exists and that they need to be certain of themselves. And I see it and I know it and I tell them who they are. I call it in them. I won't let them believe anything else but that. I brainwash them. I do not care. The news brainwashes people to be scared. I brainwash my team to feel powerful when they're around me. And that's why they want to be around me more because I keep making them feel that way. And then the third level, level of leadership, I say, is to make your leaders, right, the people that you're building, yeah. make leaders. Yeah. So I got a whole company here that is leaders breeding more leaders. Like they're so addicted to what we do now and holding themselves accountable because they have a standard that other people are watching that they want to keep holding that standard, getting even crazier, totally immersing into being a greater version of themselves every day, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, and then also making other people that way. It's a total freaking freak obsession around here. It's awesome. And, and you can get paid gray. I call it heaven on earth. Like you change other people's lives. Um, social media to me, this is uh, is an accountability tool. Every morning you'll see me at the gym working out. Every every morning you'll see me kissing my kids when I'm it's at home. Process, yeah. Every morning you'll see me with my team. Every morning you'll see me uh, out with the sales team or out on a stage or out doing something. Every every, every day. Every day, like because if you if you quit seeing that, 
then like then you should be worried. I, I, yeah, yeah I I'm full of shit. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So like to me, people are like, oh, why do you need social media? Well, number one, that's the era we're in. And everybody's on their phone. So if you're looking for your audience, if you're looking for your next hire, if you're looking for your people, if you're looking for help, they're here. Like, so let's not be dumb about that. Yeah. Okay. And then number two, also on top of that, um, if you want to build a business, right, we get 1,500 leads roughly a day that come in where people text in 918-210-0254. And they say, hey, I need help. You changed my life. Can you help me with this? So I wanted you to know that whenever people text that number, I mean, me and my coaches, we're all here to help them. Um, so I don't run ads. I don't, I, I mean, we get 150 million views every 28 days on social media. We don't spend, we spend $0 on advertising. Mm. Um, and you know, like, Hey, I, I think I should advertise, but look, dude, uh, if you, you talked about Alex Ramosi, right? Yeah. He, he said, if you build a product so good, yeah. you don't have to advertise. No. It's when you have a shitty product and you need to keep chasing a new cu a customer because the old customers are falling off. So we need new ones to come on. Then, then that's a problem. We've, uh, we, we do need to market, but we can't even handle the leads we got coming in. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, I, you know, our goal is to have a billion dollar company and 300 employees and, and it's like, or 300 teammates. I mean, it's like, it's just, uh, it's just crazy. But dude, we love what we do. I think that anybody, um, anybody, and I mean, anybody that's watching this, everybody can change. I was dead. I honestly looked in the mirror. I didn't recognize myself. I was like, dude, that isn't even my body. That's an alien's body. That's not me. Like, that's not who I thought I was. But then I really took a good, hard, hard look at me. Um, the good thing with every company is that everything falls, right, and, and rises on the leader. And then also everything happens is the leader's fault, good or bad. And then also um, the, the leader is ultimately the problem and the solution. So like all of us right now, we can all change everything in our life. Um, but I, I really, truly think that a lot of people are just going through the motions right now. And um, I think that a lot of people aren't fulfilled. We're in an era right now where people are chasing success and money and they don't even know what that means. Yep. And uh, they're unfulfilled. And I'm telling you, when you play the chase game and you don't own your life, you're never going to make it. You're on a treadmill yeah, and yeah. you're going to end up sacrificing shit you're going to regret. Yeah. Okay. I love the out. You can't out earn your own self. Con is that it? Yeah, you cannot earn your own self worth, or you cannot earn your own self image. So good, right? Like whatever you think about yourself is the end of your paycheck. So, Andy, I want to talk about faith because God showed up in my life at seventeen. Sounds like He's shown up quite a bit in your life. How do you think about co-creating your life with God? Like when you think of, because I'm sure you've experienced these moments where you have an idea, you write it down, you believe it, and just this crazy situation happens and all of a sudden that crazy that thing happens. Mm -hmm. And the more you're vibrating at this level, it's probably happening on a daily basis. Yeah. How do you think of that? Because I think that's a level that most people that are performing the tactics, if they don't have the faith part, they never get to understand the potential. Yeah. Well, so the biggest thing is, is number one, if anybody's ever tithed, anybody, um, once you do, you'll understand the principle of giving yep. and then receiving, right? Yep. And um, I remember writing checks that I knew that would probably bounce um, in church. And uh, there, there's a company called The Life Church, Craig Rochelle. Mm -hmm. right? I know, you know Craig. Yeah. Rochelle? Yeah. I follow him on Instagram. He's great. Yeah, great guy. When me and my wife started in Oklahoma at Craig Rochelle, watching him. On you Psycho started Street. there. Mm -hmm. oh, that's amazing. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I've read a couple of his books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I used to sit there and watch Craig. And at one point in time, me and my wife, um, we gave everything we had all the time, everything, like everything we had. And my wife, uh, uh, or the, one day the preacher came up, Craig Rochelle came up and, uh, goes, Hey, we've got this, uh, meeting we want you guys to come to. I, I never even met him. I just watch him. You know what I'm saying? And I listen to him. I look up to him and I'm like, w about what? And they're like, well, you, had given the most in this uh, church um, than anyone else. So we want you to know where we're putting the money. And, you know, I didn't even know that we were uh, giving, uh, we were just giving everything we had all the time. And we were so lost and we just needed God and we needed him in our life. And, um, you know, this is going back, you know, 10 years ago, right? Um, and he had seven churches at this time. This was one of them. And he was building the online deal. And I remember, man, I was like, dude, I don't even care. I just wanted to give it away to people that could use it better than us. And because I was just going to go buy shit. So we just kept giving it away. At that point in time, our life, we had some of the biggest blessings. We were having our children. All these things were happening. We were just, 
we were lost, but we were also like so happy. There was these blessings. I started to realize with humans, like it's not possible. With but with God, it is possible. It truly is possible. It's not a saying. It's not a T-shirt deal. It's not a book that motivates you. It's not a motivational speech. It is real. And I'm going to tell you this. Every time that I've leaned in, and and you know, it's like when things are good, we always seem to lean out. Then it gets hard, and we come back. It's because we're stupid ass humans, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. But we have always prayed every night together, me and my wife. Um, we we believe that without God, we're totally screwed. And um, at the end of the day, he's our foundation. And honestly, the first two years, I didn't talk about God a lot um, because I was like, if, hey, if we talk about God, we're probably going to lose some people. I don't know, man. I don't know how to integrate it, right? Like, like. But then my brother, who's super cool, he goes, dude, you need to tell people the foundation of your life. And... And we did. And, but then I, cause I cuss, right? So I thought, well, but, but damn, I, you know, I cuss and you know, I did all this stuff a long time ago. He goes, Andy, it doesn't matter. Your goal isn't to be perfect. Your goal is to tell people where you find your strength. And if anybody thinks you're perfect, right, right. They're an idiot. Anybody you look up to, dude, they've all screwed up. They've all done crazy shit. Everybody that you look up to, even Craig Rush. That's why I love these preachers that have been through stuff that tell us like, Hey, dude, real. one time I did all this stuff and it was horrible. I shouldn't even be allowed on this stage, yeah. but, but I changed, you know what I mean? And I found my grace in God. And I asked for forgiveness and then this happened. And you're like, Oh man, well, fuck that can happen to me now. That's what I want. Um, but anyways, God is the foundation of our life. Um, without him, we would be lost anytime. If you make it, and you make a lot of money and you build something cool without God, there's a good chance it'll go away or there's a good chance you won't have any peace. Okay? Like the peace thing, um, you'd say, well, what, what's your biggest, uh, how do you know like that God exists the most? Well, because in pure chaos, I can be at complete peace. Like complete peace. Like I don't. In the don't, storm. In the storm. I don't get stirred up, man. Like I really don't. I get fired up, I get excited, I get ready for a challenge, but I honestly stay at peace. And I feel like that's the reason why anxiety has never tore us down. And when we make big moves, we don't worry about it. And you know, we take our family with us, we call our own shots, we're not, we're not crowd pleasers, we do things our own way. Um, you know, and, uh, but God is definitely our foundation, man. And you know, just like with you, and, and honestly, dude, with a lot of people that are successful, they, they repeat the same story that me and you are telling right now. All of them do. So if you listen up, it would be, hey, get right with God, okay? Take your family with you, right? Don't be one-dimensional. You can have it all, right? If you give up your health to chase money, okay? I'm just saying, if you do, you know, if somebody gave you $10 million cash, but they said you couldn't wake up tomorrow, would you take it? Yeah, no, because you're like, no, I want to wake no. up. So yeah. act like today's a $10 million fucking day. Yeah, yeah, or act like, hey, my health is more important than money. Yeah. So, like, if you look at your priority list today, like, shouldn't your health be before money? Like, if waking up was better than $10 million, like, wouldn't your health be better than money? Yeah. Well, then, dumbass, get get in the gym. And by the way, um, as parents, right, like, being an example for our kids and our people, our our, our team or people that look up to us or people that we're coaching dude when we don't take care of ourselves, it just lets them know it's okay not to take care of themselves yeah. you don't keep the commitments you make to yourself they know they see it it's yeah th- yeah dude like like to me the foundation the foundation of me of everything we've built um other than trust loyalty never lying keeping your word has been physical health because to me this like we're in a we're in an era where everybody's mentally fucked up yeah like they're all mentally screwed. And if you look, a lot of them are overweight. Okay. Um, Andrew Tate, whoever you watch, doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't really watch him a lot, but I remember him saying something. I said, dude, that's the truest thing I ever heard. He said, this guy emailed me one time, goes, hey, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to commit suicide. He said, hey, man, I can't stop you from doing anything you got your mind made up on. He goes, let me just ask you one favor, though. He goes, go in the gym, get a six pack first. If you'll go in the gym and you'll get a six pack, and you still want to kill yourself, then I get it. He goes, but I'm willing to bet that if you'll go to the gym and you'll get a six pack, by the time you do, you're going to want to live a great life. He goes, just promise me that you'll get in the gym, get a six pack, and then you can do whatever you want. want. That. That's awesome. The guy's messaged him along the way, right? And, you know, he's, he's intrigued by it. And this guy's, he loves his life now. Hell yeah. He's a coach. He's teaching other people. He's into fitness. There, there's something about, man, like this mind, like it starts to go crazy when we don't work on ourselves. 
And I think that people need to understand when they get in the gym, they yeah. work on themselves. Yeah. And when they do, yeah. they, they, they become a new person. It's like total recreation every day you're working on yourself. Because everybody wants to suck everything out of you. Suck the life out of you. You got 20 suck other Suck your people energy, your money, you all that. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, so if you don't put you first and you don't make a little bit of time for you, I promise you somewhere along the way, you'll stop being you and you'll start being what everybody else wants you yeah. to be. Yeah. Exhaust the body to tame the mind. That's the way I think about it. I go in there to, to get my mind straight. Last question was land the plane because and, and a fun one. You talked about people you admire and you know, they're real. I saw your reel recently where you got to meet Andy Frisella. Mm -hmm. And you know, they say don't meet your heroes. Okay. How, how did like, how did you feel after that? Tell us about that moment because it looked like here's a, you know, you know, game recognized game, yeah. you know? And, and again, social media is one of these things where you can literally be fans of each other and when you meet. So how'd that go down? What yeah, did so, you take away so from that? So we were at an event and uh, dude, you know, I've been doing my deal had my head down. I watched my people that I look up to. Um, and I live by these standards or these values, you know, or, or the, or maybe some advice that people give us. And, uh, literally, um, when I met him, he goes, dude, I want to tell you, dude, he goes, I watched your video. I, I see what you stand for. I started watching your shit. I wanted to see if you're real. And he's like, dude, you're one of the realest motherfuckers out there coming and, from the guy. Yeah. And he goes, uh, um, Number one, he grabbed his wife. He goes, come here. He's like, uh, we need to, I want to have you out to our place. So we fly out next week. Yeah, to go to Andy Frazella's. We go to his HQ. We go there at 2 o'clock. And then we go back to his house uh, for dinner that night. And uh, he's like, you know, how many people do you want to bring out with you? I said, 15. And he's like, done. 15 people, you, me, my wife, our house. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about life. Yeah, man. And Andy's podcast, the MFCO project back in the day. Yeah. Like, dude, it shifted everything. I coach with Ed and he's my private coach and, um, great guy, dude. It's just like, you get around good people, man. You get around good people. And, but and those I, are, but those two guys, Andy and Ed, they're completely different. Yep. They are the same, yep. but they're completely different. Same and, foundation. Uh, and, uh, they are the realest. They are the realest people that, that run in the game right now. Bradley's my brother. I look up to him a lot. He tells the he truth. He makes me giggle. That's yeah, Bradley. He's hilarious. Funniest yeah. guy in the world. But Bradley, uh, Andy Frazella, uh, Ed Milet, those guys are awesome. Uh, you know, Muscle Keaton is another guy that I really Go like. Go and hang out with him in Utah, yeah. Uh, I love him. He's amazing. And, uh, you know, just th th those would be some core guys that I would tell you that, listen, they love their families. Their families are everything to them. They also love what they do. They love God. They don't, they don't work for money. They work for what they believe. They, they chase what they believe. Um, and dude, they're not going to change um, no matter what. They're on this mission. And dude, they're, they keep attacking every day. They're relentless. They're smart. They keep evolving. Um, they're awesome, man. So, so anyway, but, but no, Andy, Andy's amazing, dude. Like, dude, I'm just, I'm just getting started with a very early business, right? So we're just getting started. We're like brand new. Um, so like, I'm totally coachable. I'm so open-minded. I know I'm probably doing a lot of stuff wrong, but I got to be doing some stuff right. So like, I just keep watching everybody. I keep watching. Really, I watch people lose more than I watch people win. Mm, say more. Yeah. Well, because when I watch people lose, it really shows me what not to do. Mm. I watch. I watch more people tolerate shitty employees than ever before, and I'm not doing it, which is why I'm very careful about who I'm who I have around here because proximity is a big deal. Also, I watch a lot of people that build shitty cultures, man. And, uh, you know, Turkey stallions don't run with turkeys. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you're going to build a, a fucking culture on, on turkeys, you're not going to have any stallions around. No, you know? And then also leaders, I watch what people do. Leaders, usually the end of your fate is your anger. I watch a lot of people as they forget where they came from and they come up. The What's end of your fate is their is anger. Your anger. Yeah, because dude, like, you know, like I'm a short tempered guy. Um, betrayal, I hate it. When if I feel like you're gonna betray me, I go from zero to like hundred and twenty real quick and I wanna kill somebody. Yeah. Because I've been betrayed and I hate it. But I also need to back off and say, Man, that's not me. You know what I mean? Like that I'm not gonna fall for that. I'm not gonna get triggered with that, man. But I watch people that still get triggered. And what happens, you come from nothing, you build something great, someone gets in your way, bam, you make a fast impulse reaction, and you fucking tear your whole Emotional body. shrapnel. Oh, yeah, and, and it's a trigger. And, dude, I know my weakness is that when I feel betrayal. You're too quick to react. Super quick. Yeah. Like, I want to kill someone. Yeah. 
and and that I know but that's your old. shadow. Yeah, that's so, your shadow side. Yeah, that's my old me. So I say, and that's why I was like, okay, cool, man, no big deal. And we just dust our feet off and we roll on. But I know that's my weakness, and that's why I always make sure that I'm around people that I know won't betray me. Yeah, that's my inner circle. And Patrick Bet David's another guy I look up to. Oh, now. dude, those yeah. are literally my favorite people. Yeah. But anyways, but with those guys, I look up to them. None of them have disappointed. All of them are amazing. So my goal is is just to keep being that example and, uh, you know, hopefully to do some super cool, crazy shit and to grow my brand where one day they're like, dude, you inspired me, man. You know, like that's my goal. I want to pay it forward. And actually, as them, as me being the student, watching them as the teacher, to now grow so fast that now they're like, dude, man, you inspired our ass. You know, that's what you need to do. Where Ed Milet calls you and goes, bro, you kidding me? Come, hey, hey, come, come hang out with your boy and tell me what's going on. Yeah. You know, so that's what I want us to do. And I think that's our next chapter is, is listening to what the teacher told us. I love it. Andy, thanks for time, man. That was incredible. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are, set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.